In this tutorial we will create a shooting enemy which will shoot projectiles at us and we can take damage and we can lose the game. So game over when our health reaches zero. Okay, let's do this. Let's create a new blueprint at first. So click here, do empty blueprint class and this will be a character. So click character and let's name this pp underscore ai enemy. Save. Okay, let's choose something to represent the enemy. Later on you can switch it with a model of your own. Click add. And let's start with a sphere for example. And let's let's fit him into the capsule. Here, this is our enemy for now. Okay, just something to uh, represent it. We're going to place this enemy inside of our map. So here, it's in my blueprints folder right here. And then I can drag this into the level. Hooray, we have our enemy right here. So back into our enemy, we're going to add the component. So let's look for power sensing and click here. Now power sensing is a component and you can already see this, uh, these lines around my enemy. And now also in my map you see these lines around my enemy. Now, this is a lot of vision because my player will be able to sense my character and when he sees him, he can attack him. But you can do it then. Well, if you like this distance, you can leave it as is. But um, let's, for this example, set this all to 600. Side radius also. So this is only when you come really close that he will shoot at us. So when I walk into the range, he will shoot. And later on you can change this. Now, these are very low settings. You want it bigger for most games. But this is just for tutorial sake. You can increase this back to default 1400 if you like. Now, with pawn sensing here selected, go down here and in event on C pawn. And the pawn that he will check for, I'm in the first person template by the way, so then cast to first person character. If your the character is uh, named otherwise, you choose the name of your character. In my case, it is this one. Then we're going to do Drag from this pin, set actor rotation. And the actor will be itself, because this will be my enemy right here. I want him to rotate it towards me before he shoots. So for the new rotation, what we are going to do, drag off this pin, find look at rotation. And we'll find two points. The starting point, which will be my enemy, and the target location, Will be my character right here so um, let's right click get actor location which will be itself and connect it to the start transform and then the target location well we need to drag this out a bit let's move it a bit will be from here get actor location And then he will find the, uh, the location of those. And then he will be able to rotate towards there. Okay. Then we need to create a variable. So here under variables, add one, can attack question mark. And it's a boolean, so this is fine. Hit compile. And at first he will be able to attack us. So set this to true and compile once again. B click to add in a branch, because only if he is able to attack us, will we attack him. So this will be the condition. So from true, spawn actor from class, and the actor that I'm going to spawn from class is the projectile, BP first person projectile. And let's look at it in the template. You see this little ball. So here you have all the options uh, under projectile movement. You can increase the speed. You can also set the gravity to zero if you want to fly it straight through or even uh, increase the gravity. This is how fast the ball will uh, fly. This is already pretty fast, but you can double it to 6000, for example. You don't really have to mess with this, but he's going to uh, fire the ball. You can also replace the sphere, the little tennis ball here with a bullet. So you can import static mesh or change it to anything you like. Right now for this tutorial, I'm going to choose this ball. But you don't need to do anything with this, just he's going to shoot his balls. Then in the viewport, I'm going to add an arrow. So here, back to my BP enemy AI, let's add a new arrow. 
and let's name this uh, let's name this to spawn location or spawn projectile location and we see a new arrow right here so let's move this one in front of our character okay so this is the place where uh, the balls will spawn so here is fine now compile will give an error because we need to uh, we need to do some magic right here okay so now from here we're going to drag this spawn uh, projectile location drag it in here and then get transform and get worlds uh, transform yeah right here this is the one and move it into the spawn transform and gone are the errors the transform is when you go back here is location rotation and the scale of this place so right now we know where to spawn it and this projectile will uh, fly straight towards our character at least that's what we're going to set up so let's take some damage on our enemy from here drag off apply damage so this is the one that we are going to need the damaged actor will be this one our first person character so from here so drag off and then plug this one in here let's give him one damage for now and the rest is all fine and after the damage is applied we no longer want to be able to attack immediately we need a little delay before they can attack again so d click to add a delay note um let's set half a second and then he can attack again so also i'll drag this out and set this back to true so what's going to happen now when my enemy and i see here the pawn sensing when i'm in this radius of the pawn sensing when he looks at my enemy he will rotate towards it then he can attack if this is already uh, on cooldown then he will spawn the projectile this will apply damage towards our uh, player then we can't attack for half a second and after half a second we can attack again and then he has to detect us again and then well the show goes around once more okay what we're then going to do is we're going to go in first person blueprints to our first person character and we're going to right click event any damage because now we are going to program the logic to take damage now i already created this variable health let's delete it so you can follow along so on variables click let's name this to our health for our player's health let's set this to a float let's compile let's give him 10 health to start out with okay so when he takes damage we need to set the health and this needs to be lower because it will take damage so let's get our health first then minus to subtract we get our health and we do minus the damage and then that will be our new health let's organize this maybe something like this will be more cleanly yes this is a way better and let's show this on screen so print string and let's show the health on screen and also b click to add a branch that is the condition let's get our health once again and if it is less or equal to zero then we lose the game for example so let's print on our screen game over but this can be anything you can create a widget with game over you can restart a level or anything you would like from this pin okay now when i start the game i will walk into the range that i set up and he will shoot at us but um, let's make sure yeah so i'm going to rotate it a bit so he can see us because when i'm behind the player i set it up to 180 degrees he won't see me so now he will be facing towards me let's hit play so nothing is happening right now this is what i want because i'm outside of the range now let's step into the range you can see he's shooting at us and here in the left top corner you can see the damage three two one and then game over because my health is below zero and now when i step out again he stops shooting inside rage he starts shooting once more and then let's open this one up again Control e go to viewport let's select bound sensing and let's increase these values once more like how they were before or we can even increase this more 
this is the sensing interval you can also make this interval faster so he will recheck um, if we are there much faster i leave this as is right now and then you can see now at the start i'm already into his vision so now let's play and he's already shooting us then i can also move our guy let's say here behind the wall and let's rotate him towards there so when we come around the wall he will see us hit play right now nothing is happening and then boom there is our enemy and he's shooting at us when we walk by now our enemy is standing still so this is perfect for turret placement or something but if you have a moving enemy you have to do one more thing so here click here volumes and i have the mesh uh, the nav mesh bounce volume this is the region where the where the enemy can uh, walk up on and now when i hit p on my uh, on my keyboard you can see the zones where my ai could walk but right now he is standing still so uh, this is what i wanted for me so right now you can have a battle you can shoot him he can shoot you but he is able to do damage to us until we lose the game don't forget to grab the free game dev toolkit in the description down below this video you will get my free ebook on how to get better at game development a free game design document to plan out your projects and a free tutorial series where you create a platformer game from scratch and those who are hungry for more i offer a sneak peek and overview of my new premium course the unreal vault where you learn how to create beautiful levels create a game from scratch to finish and how to set up boss fights and create dragon fights with different attacks including fire breathing. So if this sounds like a good deal to you, I see you there. Click the link and grab your game dev toolkit now while it's still free.